Trombone Shorty by Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews, illustrated by Caldecott Honor winner Brian Collier. Here's our title page Trombone Shorty, written by words by Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews, pictures by Brian Collier, published by Abrams Books for Young Readers in New York. Where you at? Where you at? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans, and our own way of talking too. And that's what we like to say when we want to tell a friend hello. So, where you at? Lots of kids have nicknames, but I want to tell you the story of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song, let's start at the beginning, because this is a story about music. But before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my greatest inspiration. I grew up in a neighborhood in New Orleans called Treme. Any time of day or night, you could hear music floating in the air. And there was music in my house, too. My big brother James played the trumpet so loud, you could hear him halfway across town. He was the leader of his own band, and my friends and I would pretend to be in the band, too. Follow me, James would say. There's one time every year that's more exciting than any other. Mardi Gras. Parades fill the streets and beaded necklaces are thrown through the air to the crowd. I loved the brass bands with their own trumpets, trombones, saxophones, and the biggest brass instrument of them all, the tuba, which rested over the musician's head like an elephant's trunk. Where you at? Where you at? Musicians would call. I like that. All day long, I could see brass bands parade by my house while my neighbors danced along. I loved these parades during Mardi Gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while. People didn't have a lot of money in Treme, but we always had a lot of music. I listened to all these sounds and mixed them together just like how we make our food. We'd take one big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, whatever's in the kitchen, and stir it up all together and let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever tried. We call it gumbo, and that's what I wanted my music to sound like. Different styles combined to create my own musical gumbo. But first, I needed an instrument. The great thing about music is that you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and I decided to make our own. We might have sounded different from the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians of Treme. We were making music, and that's all that mattered. Then one day I found a broken trombone that looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't sound perfect, but finally, with a real instrument in my hands, I was ready to play. The next time the parade went by my house, I grabbed that trombone and headed out into the street. My brother James noticed me playing along and smiled proudly. Trombone Shorty, he called out, because the instrument was twice my size. Where you at? From that day on, everyone called me Trombone Shorty. I took that trombone everywhere I went and never stopped playing. I was so small that sometimes I fell right over to the ground because it was so heavy. But I always got back up and I learned to hold it up high. I listened to my brother play songs over and over, and I taught myself those songs too. I practiced day and night, and sometimes I fell asleep with my trombone in my hands. One day, my mom surprised me with tickets to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the best and biggest music festival in town. We went to see Bo Diddley, who my mom said was one of the most important musicians of all time. As I watched him on stage, I raised my trombone to my lips and started to play along. He stopped his band in the middle of the song and asked the crowd, who's that playing out there? Everyone started pointing, but Bo Diddley couldn't see me because I was the smallest one in the place. So my mom held me up in the air and said, That's my son, Trombone Shorty. Well, Trombone Shorty, come on up here, Bo Diddley said. 
The crowd passed me overhead until I was standing on stage next to Bo Diddley himself. I walked right up to the microphone and held my trombone high up in the air, ready to blow. What do you want to play? Bo Diddley asked. Follow me, I said. After I played with Bo Diddley, I knew I was ready to have my own band. I got my friends together and we called ourselves the Five O'Clock Band because that was the time we went out to play each day after finishing our homework. We played all around New Orleans. I practiced and practiced, and soon my brother James asked me to join his band. When people wondered who the kid in his band was, he would proudly say, "That's my little brother, Trombone Shorty. Where you at?" And now I have my own band called Trombone Shorty and Orleans Avenue, named after a street in Treme. I played all around the world, but I always come back to New Orleans. And when I'm home, I make sure to keep my eyes on the younger musicians in town and help them out, just like my brother did for me. Today, I play at the same New Orleans jazz festival where I once played with Bo Diddley. And when the performance ends, I lead a parade of musicians around, just like I used to do in the streets of Treme, with my friends. Where you at? Where you at? I still keep my trombone in my hands, and I will never let it go. This is the author's note, and you have some real pictures of Trombone Shorty when he was a kid.、Uh, on the bottom left, it says Troy Andrews parading through Treme, and at the top right, you see a picture of him with Bo Diddley,、um, and you see how little he is. All right, I'm going to read the author's note. I'd like to say that the city of New Orleans raised me, and for me, music was everywhere—from church to the street to my very own house. My grandfather Jesse Hill was a musician, and my brother James was a musician, and I wanted to be just like them. There were people always coming and going from my house, but music was the thing we had in common. No matter how tough things got, listening to music always made me feel better. When I was very young, my neighborhood friends and I would pretend that we were like the brass bands that would parade down our streets, and because we couldn't afford instruments. We really did make them out of whatever we could find. The box from a 12-pack of soda would be fas- fastened around the neck with Mardi Gras beads to become a drum, and pencils became drumsticks. I used to hoist an old big wheel bicycle over my shoulders and pretend it was a tuba. Empty bottles became horns and wind instruments. Thankfully, I got my first trombone when I was four years old, and by age six, I was leading my own band. The only reason I succeeded as a musician was because I practiced every day. Practicing was easy to do because I loved playing music so much. I knew that if I just kept playing, good things would happen to me. I felt it in my bones. I played around town with my friends for many years, and together we tried to soak in everything we could about the incredible musical traditions of New Orleans. I felt lucky that the previous generations of New Orleans musicians wanted to share their craft with me. It was my job to carry on this music musical heritage. I attended the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts and started to develop my own musical style, one that paid tribute to New Orleans' own jazz, blues, and gospel, but also mixed in other kinds of music that I loved, like rock and roll, funk and hip hop. I called it super funk rock. My music caught the eye of Lenny Kravitz, and at age 19, I joined the horn section of his band. This led to performing with other incredible musicians over the years, such as U2, Green Day. Eric Clapton, BB King, Prince, and many more. I formed my own band, Trombone Shorty and Orleans Avenue, and together we've released three studio albums and even played at the Grammy Awards. In 2012, I had the honor of performing for President Barack Obama at the White House for a Black History Month celebration. In 2013, I was chosen to play the coveted closing set at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the same festival where I performed with Bo Diddley when I was a child. As important as it is for me to carry the torch for the music of New Orleans, it's even more important for me to make sure that this tradition continues. In 2010, I launched the Trombone Shorty Foundation and Trombone Shorty Music Academy to make sure that the music and culture of New Orleans stays alive. While I've been fortunate enough to travel the world and share my music, I always return home to New Orleans. Nothing has been more inspiring to me than working with the children there, 
I wanted to write this book to try to inspire hope in kids who might be growing up under difficult circumstances, but who also have a dream just like I did. I'm living proof that as long as you work hard, you can make your dreams take flight. This is a picture of what Trombone Shorty looks like today. And this says about the Trombone Shorty Foundation. The mission of the Trombone Shorty Foundation is to preserve the rich musical history of New Orleans. The Trombone Shorty Foundation and the Tulane University and Tulane University partnered to create the Trombone Shorty Music Academy, which provides music and business education, instruction, and a mentorship experience to New Orleans high school students who are gifted in music. Experienced instructors help young underserved musicians express themselves and pursue their dreams while also supporting their community. Please visit TromboneShortyFoundation.org. Sunrise in the sunset.